Welcome back to the Fresh Outlook. Well, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has been spearheading international efforts to end 19 days of conflict in the Middle East, in which nearly 1,000 Palestinians, many of them civilians, have been killed. Israel has lost 39 people. Now, the fighting has been ongoing since July 8th. That was immediately following the murders of three Israeli teenagers. Our expert panel of Didi, Dr. Bart, and Sebastian, stay with us. Well, we welcome you now, Dr. Thank Bart. You. Um, it has been such intense fighting watching this. Um, now, this is 27 years. Uh, the question is, can you ever really resolve this? There's, there's such resentment on both sides. Is there any way to truly resolve this? Uh, we'll start, uh, Sebastian. No, I don't believe it's an ongoing conflict. It will keep going on. The policy of Israel and obviously the Hamas on the other side, it's not going to be resolved. You know, there are so many dissertations written about you know, this conflict. You know, what has even found a solution how to do it. Now, in the last, within the last hour since we started the show, they were going to extend that 12-hour truce mm -hmm. to, f to another four hours. Uh, we do have reports uh, that there have been rockets sire, uh, fired as well. Um, so we're getting these details minute to minute, but certainly it's an unsettling feeling right now, Dr. Barton. Yeah, j just two things. On the negative side, I, I agree. This is really just a horrible conflict. But I think that you know, if you want to breed hatred, this kind of action on both sides is going to make it even worse, obviously, over time. The only thing that I say that might be a positive factor in the whole thing, uh, on the positive end, is what happens with social media now? We're in a different era. We always talk about that on this show. Is it time for a tipping point where, where maybe the Palestinians and the Israelis come together with some kind of resolution that now is the time to maybe have a two-state solution, have some kind of solution? I know that's overly optimistic. but. Uh, I, I wonder if that's not going to happen here. Well, it goes back so many decades. It's a, it's a great question, but uh, I, it doesn't look like in the near future, in the next coming days or weeks, we're hoping that right. we may see some sort of re resolution. But let me ask another question. You know, you're, you're looking at nearly 1,000 Palestinians dead and 39 Israelis, um, and a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, what's, what's happening here? Are the Israelis going to be looked at as the bullies? Well, no, they're not. They're defending themselves. For one, they didn't start it. Secondly, what the Palestinians are doing, or Hamas, they leave people there as human shields. They don't care. They are thinking, oh, you know what? We don't care about these people dying. All they care about is their mission. When you've got people that have no respect for human life, well, you know, yeah, I, I, think, I think this is a great point because, again, in terms of a tipping point, are the Palestinians now going to take a look at this and say, hey, listen, this Hamas is not really leading us down the right road. Are we ready to do something with Israel? Are we really going to try to recognize them? Remember, they don't even want to recognize these people as having a right to exist. Right. So to Didi's point, it's so extreme that I wonder at some point, do we really make a turn here or what? Well, it looks like also that uh, the Israelis have uh, shut down many of those tunnels, those underground tunnels, right. um, which certainly will put which an will end help. to Hamas as well. Um, but any other, any, how do you see this going? Yeah, um, first of all, I believe that Israel has a right to self-defense the same way like the Ukraine has a right to self-defense. But I'm going to criticize uh, Benjamin Netanyahu over here. I don't believe his response is proportionate at this point. We have 1,000. Um, Palestinians dead, the majority of them civilians. And when you can see the shelling of the UN school and the United Nations provided GPS coordinates of the Israeli army saying this is the school, we need a window to evacuate people. They pretty much didn't give them any kind of window and just, you know, shell the school. Well, I was just going to say in terms of, uh, again, going back to the, the figures of how many mm -hmm. uh, Palestinians have died, um, the shelling of that UN school uh, was heartbreaking. Um, Again, to your point, in terms of international law. Yeah, I mean, in terms of international law, I believe you know the United Nations uh, Human Rights Commission has started investigation to investigate it as a war crime. Uh, but to the point which uh, Doctor said is, uh, you have the social media right now, and you are going to look like a bully. Now you have to conduct the war not only on uh, on the ground but also on the you know cyberspace. And you know, you have social media, and now you can see a lot of people around the world who have supported Israel. Now it's very hard for them to come up and support, you know, su support the country if, if, if there is an allegation of war crimes. Now, let's talk about the president. We talked about how um, there was a, the FAA banned flights into Tel Aviv for a very short mm -hmm. time, about 24 hours. Uh, let's talk about the president right now and his neutral stance right now. Um, Didi, you're shaking your head. Yeah, just weak. I mean, you know, is he ever, ever going to step up and do anything? It's very unsettling, upsetting. No. And not only that, Kerry, he was caught on a hot mic, and he was pro-Palestinian. Did you catch that? 
Well, I, I, I look at this differently. I look at this as no matter who the president is, and I'm not just sticking up for this one at this point in time. But you always do. We, that's right, we need, that's okay, I, I agree, but what we need is a coalition of forces to make a change. This is not a conflict, and psychologists like to talk about approach avoidance conflicts. That was the hot mic. And, you know, we like to talk about maybe approach, uh, approach of conflicts. And, and we just yeah. want to say, say that we are seeing John Kerry right mm -hmm. there, uh, who is also in Paris, and I didn't mean to cut you no, off there, Dr. But that's Park. when it comes to the But we need to explain to our viewers why that's up right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we do want to explain uh, that he is in Paris and he is spearheading some efforts uh, to obviously uh, get these peace talks moving forward. Right, and none of it's going to work unless there's a coalition. And we talk about being tough. Well, we don't want to be tough and have another Afghanistan or Iraq. We don't want to just say, be tough. What we really need to do is have a coalition of forces. Actually, Bush 41 did a good job, if you think about it, in the Gulf War. He had all the nations behind him. Well, that's what we need here. Easier to say than do. Yeah, no, I understand that. But no one but, respects but no, no, Obama. That's the problem. Well, no, it's, it's, not a matter of, it's not a matter of respect. It it's is. a matter of somebody else stepping up and the Europeans and other nations stepping up and having a coalition. That's what we need in this world today. Well, I, th I think that with the uh, UK the down flights, I think that's one of the things that we were talking about in the uh, previous segment. That with the Netherlands now being on board with with uh, Australia, I think that they you may see uh, many of these nations coming on board to su to support the U.S. Well, more. psychologically, that's the only way it's going to work. Let me just tell this. You know, I'm, I'm going to criticize President Obama uh, because of you know we've, during his administration, we have seen worsening of international relations between Israel and the United States, and we have seen worsening of, of, of relations between the, U the U.S. and Central and Eastern Europe. The and let's not forget. Yes, I was going to say yeah. Russia. <laughs> so so <laughs> the, no, the t and we have two results. Now we have mm -hmm. war in the Ukraine, uh, war in Gaza Strip, and I think you, you saw this culmination of this worsening when George. Kerry goes, you know, in front of the camera and says, "We are moving forward to the ceasefire," and the government, you know, Israel votes for it and unanimously, unanimously, you know, rejects it. So it's like slap in the face. You know, he, this is your closest ally, and they say no to you. So yeah, I, I believe, you know, that Kerry should always make an offer that no country can refuse, or otherwise, she should not make an offer. Didi, you're, you're shaking your well, head. Well, I mean, you're absolutely right. This has happened all the way back to Syria in the, in the red line. You know, there's nothing, you know, you cannot say you're going to do something, then not do it. And you have to take care of your allies. And this has happened over and over and over again, which, you know, it is widely known, I think, that international relations with the president are bad. No well, one respects him well, anymore. What about international relations with Iraq, Afghanistan? We get into wars that cost us trillions of dollars, but, and then we talk about that we, right we, now. We, this has gone on for a long time. No, and, we're talking and, about what Obama has what, done. What Nothing. the president needs to do, and maybe he could do it better. Maybe he's trying. But he needs to get a whole group of nations together. Well, that's but, a, that's but, very uh, difficult. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not usually the one that has an opinion here, but um, we can point to Syria right now. We can point to the relations that have that are worse than almost Cold War days. Yeah. Um, we've got the problems with Israel and Palestine. Um, I mean, do you think that he's doing a good job? I believe he's I, on the campaign I, trail today. I, I think it's the result of the conflicts and the nature of the conflicts in the world that we live in. And if you want to blame a president for not being tough enough, then let's take a look back in history. Do not go to Bush. I and swear. I, and I, and I, I, really, I really don't think that this is the time to say we need a tougher guy. We need somebody who's going to try to make somebody a coalition. Wait, wait a minute. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to support that. And I will support something that Michael Bloomberg said when uh, he came to tell when he went to Tel Aviv. He said, you know what? We got to stop the criticizing. Even though our jobs here are to bring a fresh outlook to all these uh, different topics. <laughs> right. um, but he did say we need to hope and give and hope that President Obama will succeed at this well, point. Well, agreed, but let's point out the obvious. Because there's a vacuum, because our president is so weak, I'm sorry, I believe it has caused all these problems or it's contributed to all these conflicts in the world. I say, uh, and I, we, well, I say that people on the right want to project the president no, as being weak. No, I don't weak. want to see that. That's what As I an say. American, I hate it, but it's true. But let, let, we do have Syria, we do have Russia, Ukraine, we do have the Middle East. Let's uh, go over to uh, Libya right now. Uh, mm -hmm. where just within the last couple of hours, again, today's show, we've had so much breaking news, um, where they have evacuated um, the Libyan embassy. Yeah, uh, more problems on top of problems. I mean, we've got, I mean, it almost feels like the 70s. I mean, you know, you hear the history of the 70s, and it was so tumultuous. It feels like we've gone back a few decades. 
I think there was one mistake made by President Obama, and that is his belief that we can uh, base international security on giving speeches. And he went to Egypt, he gave a great speech. He went to the Czech Republic, he gave a fabulous speech. But you know, the, the, the internet, nobody changed. You know, uh, Russia didn't change, you know, the Middle East didn't change. You need so much more proactive approach. And I'm going to actually now say something good about John Kerry. I think he's a lot better than Hillary Clinton. I think he has, you know, he's undertaking a lot of, you know, actions. He's trying. He has very good motivation. And I hope he's going to succeed at one point. Oh, interesting point there, Sebastian. Um, I do have a question for the panel before we do take a break. Um, with the Libyan embassy and with the problems in the Middle East right now, do you think you're going to see more radicals uh, signing up to uh, in some of these terrorist organizations? Um, yes. Didi. One, one big yes, of course. I, I do. I think, I think the world is in such turmoil and such hatred that this is going to breed more hate. I'm really afraid that we can see Eastern Ukraine becoming like sort of a Gaza Strip, you know, uh, conflict and l long term that's my biggest threat, I mean, fear. Now, why would that be a, a greater fear than any other hot spot in the world right now? Because ge geopolitically, it's a lot more, it has a lot more weight. You have Russia on one side, United States and European Union, you know, both have nuclear weapons. On the other side, you have Israel and Palestine. Israel supposedly have nuclear weapons, but the Palestinians don't. So it's ge geopolitically a lot less, you know, uh, I mean, of lesser value than, than the one in the Ukraine. But that's my, my personal opinion, probably you might disagree. Do you agree disagree. with that, Didi? I don't know. I think I still worry a little bit more about Iran <laughs> than yeah. I do the Ukraine. Because for me, it's like, you know, all this is going on while Iran is getting the materials, amassing the materials for a nuke. If they get the nuke, we're in huge trouble. Well, uh, we will... Uh, and that's just another cherry note. <laughs> that's a cherry on top of, of the great big happy cake. And, and we did promise that we were going to uh, lighten things up uh, in the <laughs> shortly, folks. Um, unfortunately, we do have a couple of national headlines that we do have to talk about as well. At the top of our list today, the Texas GOP bands together to plead the president to enforce immigration law. We'll be back with more on that story in two minutes.